Hello, Internet. Today we are focused, laser focused, to answer one question once and for all. Does Susan love me? And you might find it a little bit strange, but I give you two sentences to come to a conclusion. The first sentence is, I like Python. And the second sentence is, Susan dislikes Python. So, what is the solution to this problem? Now, we are data scientists. We are therefore applying a word embedding algorithm to examine if the two subjects, this would be Susan and I, are close to each other in the reduced topological space because we take each word and we do an embedding of each word to find out about the closeness of two words. We transform it, we embed it in a vector space. And in this vector space, each word is represented by a unique vector. And we can then, let's say in the simplest case, take a cosine similarity function and calculate the distance between these two vectors, how close they are together. Now we do this and we have only two sentences, so you might guess already the outcome. It is inconclusive. We have not enough data. But wait. We just learned about the graph neural network theory and we applied software libraries like PyTorch Geometric, Deep Graph Library, DGL, <laughs> and encoded this. So what about we apply our newfound knowledge about graph neural networks? And you, you are on the right track. I can tell you this is it. Yes. And you know why? Because it is very easy. If word embeddings do not work for this particular problem, we explore another kind of embedding. And not just a graph embedding where we add up the vectors of all the nodes in a sentence. No, we now have the third highest level we can imagine, knowledge graph embedding. And it goes like this. I have two sentences. I like Python. Now it is easy to say, hey, each word should be a node. And if we have a linear sequence, like words in a sentence, then I have here my node i, I have here my edge, it's a directed edge in this graph, like is another node, Python is another node, and then Susan dislikes Python. So we have six nodes and it's a linear structure. So now, please tell me, with the classical graph theory, does Susan love me? Hmm. Now, it is maybe a little bit more complicated because looking at this, we notice that like and dislikes could be negations of each other. And maybe this is because we have one object on the right side and one object on the left side. This could be a relational structure and not a node structure. So, now that we have this new structural knowledge, we apply we go to our topological workbook and we find out, okay, we, we, we face the problem from a different angle. We say, I have an entity. My entity H for head is, let's say, human. Maybe it's a class, a superclass. And in this humans, we have a subset of I and a subset of Susan. And I assume that we are both belonging to a certain class and we are both an entity in this relationship graph, in this knowledge graph representation we are choosing now. And then we have an entity and we have a superclass of code, of computer code, computer language, whatever you prefer. And it's Python. So this is a function that maps itself to itself. And then we have relationships. And one relationship between two nodes, and now we don't call them nodes like in a graphical, classical graph theory. Now we call them entity. Yes, for historical reasons. And we say we have an entity H, the head. We have a relationship. It's a directed edge. Don't forget this. And this relationship has a value. It is this symbolic value. It's like. We suppose it is a word. And this word could have a meaning. And the relationship we shorten with R. And then we need, of course, another entity since we have here a relationship and it's another node. And this is now Python. And this Python belongs 
to a supercluster to a superclass of computer languages. Now, my main question of today is, does Susan love me? And you can see now in this representation of the problem, of the data, of our input data that we have, that there is a missing link. And there should be a link from Susan to me. And the predicate of this link, the relationship structure, the symbolic value of this should be loves. Susan loves me. Well, we have a missing link. And now we're entering the area of a so-called link prediction problem. So we want to predict the link. You might say, okay, but hey, we just have two sentences. So we need all the knowledge there is to find the missing link and to have a probability assumption about the symbolic factor of this relationship. Is it like, dislike, love, hate? Doesn't even know them. Didn't even notice me. For this, we turn now to the knowledge graph and the knowledge graph representation. It's, a, it's an old, old topic and there has been a lot of research done. So we gonna just rush through trying to understand the notation and the main idea. Now, notation we already had. We have here the notes we call entity and the start notes we call H for head and the end entity of our relationship we call tail or the end of it. And the relationship between those nodes we call we denote R. Now, the key idea is again, like in word embedding or like in graph embedding, that the model entities, so I and Susan and Python, and the relations like like and dislike that we have a model that the entities and the relations are mapped to an embedding space. And we hope that the topological structure is a vector space or model entities and the relations in the embedding or vector space R. And we hope that the dimensionality of this vector space is a reduced dimensionality given our initial problem. And give them a true triplet, like I, like Python, H, R, T. The goal is that the embedding, now the transformation, the mapping from this graph structure, non-Euclidean structure in a embedding space that should have the distance function and whatsoever should be a vector space or should be closed. The embedding of H and R, so of I, like, the world of I like, I like bikes, I like skiing, I like biking, I like swimming. All this embedding should be close to the embedding of T. And T is our tail, and our tail here is Python. So within the new embedded world of swimming, skiing, whatever, biking, now we have a new entry, and this is Python. And we have now two main questions to solve this problem. How to embed H and R, how to map it, how to transform it in a vector space, and how to define closeness. The distance matrix that we have in an Euclidean or, or some other vector space is not given here. So how do we define the closeness? And I think it is a good idea to look back to the node embedding problems we already encountered when we did the graph neural networks and I showed you that the node embedding and the link prediction is easily done. And since you should not have a look back here again is a recap from our node embedding. And remember, this is the gorgeous presentation I recommended already to you. This is from Professor Jury Leskovich from Stanford University and his course is CS224W in the 2021 edition. And in his lecture notes, he has exactly this presentation where he showed you, we have here our input network and we here have a very simple network. And this input network we had with GNNs, the problem is to define similarity in this vector space. 
in the d-dimensional embedding space. So we had an encoder that encoded a node to our new space and another node V, also an encoder to define the decoder that the similarity here in this new space has a direct relevance to the closeness within the GNN. And the way we did it, I showed you in my old video, now is the basic to understand how we should do this in our current problem. And before we encounter this, we follow here the university lecture and we say, hey, careful. We have to watch out for some problems. The first is symmetry. You know, symmetry is all, always critical in physical, chemical, system, gravitational. Symmetry generates something. And what we're looking here is, is the, is the relation symmetric? So, or from head to tail is identical to the relation from tail to head. No, very clearly no, because I like Python, but Python likes me? No, I don't think that Python, a computer language, has any emotions. So I would say maybe there is no symmetric relation. Now, you can have composition relation, where you have a common Y, and then you find that a relation X set is simply a hopping from one link to the other. Like here, for example, my mother's husband is my father. Or you have one to n and n to one relations. You can count all the names of the student and the relationship is student of, I don't know, MIT. So you have a lot of n's, a lot of people, and the relation is student of, MIT is true. But you also can have uh, the other relation one to n where you say MIT is visited by, and then the names of all the students. So, and there are now some models. Let's focus on two. The first is trans E and trans R. And the first notation, the score function that we are looking for here is an addition, vector addition, H plus R equals T. So the hat plus the relation, the embedding, the embedded vectors, equals now the, the target, the tail. Sometimes I say target, sorry, excuse me. So if we say now the norm of h plus r minus t, so h plus r minus t should be zero to have a perfect true relationship, you can define as a score function. And then you can iterate over it and define the new mechanism and so on. Uh, oh yeah, maybe I should show you something else before we start this. To calculate knowledge graph embeddings, this is exactly what we are doing now, there's a three-step methodology. First, you define a method for encoding each node in the graph in a vector. This is what we have done, h and t. And then you define a function to calculate the similarity between the nodes. This is this was by node embedding our encoder function to the embedded space. And then to optimize the system, you optimize the encoding function. So you say the smaller the loss function is, the better I can optimize my, my encoding function to encode each node in the graph. And we have already seen with GNN there's the random walk idea that you have a multitude of random walks in a, knowledge, in a graph, in a knowledge graph whatsoever, and then, you know, the, the path forward is similar. So, Transy has this idea that you have the head plus the relation in an embedding vector presentation, the representation equals the vector representation of the target of the tail node. So you have a translation, intuition, the margin loss, you have the valid triple, the corrupted triple, and the small distance, and whatsoever. You have some examples, I don't want to go into this, but there are some limitations with this methodology. 
yeah, maybe skip this and go right to the next one, trans R. Now trans R is a little bit more complicated if you want, because you operate now with two vector spaces. Oops. All right. Come on. Trans R. The model entities as vectors model the entities the nodes as vectors in the entity space R. This is now our entity space and model each relation R as a vector R in the relationship, in the relation space R. So we have an entity space and we have a relation space. And you see splitting up spaces which direction we are going. And M denotes our projection matrix. And if you're interested in, in looking up at original lit literature, we have here from 2015, Lindia Kai, Learning Entity and Relation Embeddings for Knowledge Graph Completion, the original publication for this topic. Again, we have some symmetry and some relations, some limitations, but what I want to show you is that just, oh, already close to 20 minutes. These are two models that we have that have a special application. If Symmetry is important for you, you know which model, composition, and one too many, you see where each model scores. And of course, if you want to do it a little bit more complicated, there are a lot of other models. And you know, the nice thing that all those models are already programmed for you, coded for you in a library I already presented to you, the Deep Graph Library. Let's have a look at this in the next video.